Welcome to section 9.5. All right, gentle people, during our last lecture, we reminded ourselves that at constant pressure, the heat equals the change in enthalpy. And remember, if I have a reaction, energy is released or gained by the system because bonds are breaking and bonds are forming. Now, just like when we talked about equilibrium, we can add this information right next to our chemical equation. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take N2, combine it with oxygen to make 2NO. Now I'm going to give an additional piece of information. If I conduct this reaction, I will get a delta H that's positive 180 kilojoules. Now if I wanted to figure out if energy is on the reactant or product side, what I can note is that this is positive. And so positive means I have an endothermic reaction. So that means that the system is gaining energy. So if the system is gaining energy or an endothermic reaction, heat or energy is going to be on the reactant side. Now, of course, the opposite is true. If delta H was less than zero, this implies that the reaction is exothermic. Now what I can do is I can go ahead and read this chemical equation just like we did in Chem 1A. The way I would read it is that I'm going to take 180 kilojoules worth of energy, combine it with one mole of N2 and one mole of oxygen, and this will yield to me two moles of NO. Now one thing you should note is that enthalpy is an extensive property. And this means that the change in enthalpy is going to be proportional to the amount of material I use. So in the last example, what I said is if you have one mole, one mole, you'll have to combine it with 180 kilojoules worth of energy. Now, if I were to go ahead and times this reaction by two, so I'm reacting two moles and two moles, well, I'm going to need twice as much energy for this reaction to go. And so that's what I want you guys to take home. When you times a reaction by two, you're going to have to times the enthalpy by that same number. However, let's say that I reverse my reaction. So in this case, I'm going from the final state to the initial state. And since I don't care about the path and I'm going backwards, all I'm going to have to do is change the sign of my enthalpy. So the take home message for this case is if you reverse the reaction, reverse the sign on delta H, and that is going to depict the new enthalpy for the reaction as you have written it. So remember, enthalpy is a state function, so I only care about the starting point and the ending point. I don't care about the path. Now this segues right into what's called Hess's law. The idea with Hess's law is that what I can do is if I have a whole bunch of known reactions, I can construct a reaction that I haven't conducted and I can calculate the enthalpy for that reaction. Now, the way that I can do this is that if I have a whole bunch of steps and they equal the overall reaction, well, adding their changes in enthalpies will be the change in that overall reaction. So let me give you guys an example. Say I start out with carbon and oxygen and I want to make CO2 gas. So what I'm interested in is the enthalpy from going from carbon and oxygen to CO2 gas. But let's say I didn't run that reaction, but let's say I have other reactions that I did do. Now, one of those reactions can be this one. I can take carbon and add half an oxygen and get carbon monoxide. And let's say that costs us a certain enthalpy, negative 110 kilojoules. So this gets me part way to my overall reaction. Now what I can do is I can take CO and add another half oxygen. Now if I do this, this gets me all the way to where I want to go. So if I add these two processes together, well, they should equal the larger process going from the start all the way to the end. Now, if I want to focus just on the chemical equations, what you guys will see is I can do a little bit of canceling out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my first reaction and my second reaction, and I'm going to add them together. Now I'm going to cancel things that appear on both sides. So I have CO here, 
CO right here. So I can cancel out these carbon monoxides. Now what this leaves me is one carbon. Now half an oxygen plus half an oxygen gets me one whole oxygen, and then finally CO2 at the end. Now I've got my overall reaction, and to get the change in enthalpy, I simply have to add these two enthalpies up together, and then I get that change in enthalpy for that overall reaction. So hopefully you guys can see what Hess's Law is all about. The basic idea is I don't care about the path I took from getting from A to B, as long as the steps add up to the overall reaction, I can add those steps up to get the change in enthalpy. With that said, let's go ahead and practice. What I want you guys to do is calculate the delta H for this reaction. I want you guys to use these reactions to get that delta H. All right, gentle people, this is going to be reminiscent on how we started manipulating stuff with equilibrium constants. So I'm going to follow kind of the same pattern. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out with my reactants and I'm going to try to find a reaction that has one of my reactants. So my first reactant here is NO gas. And I see that NO gas is in my first reaction. Now the NO gas is on my reactant side, so I'm going to write that reaction as is. NO plus O3 gets me NO2 plus O2. So I did nothing to this reaction, so I'm going to go ahead and leave delta H as it is. So negative 198.9. Now the second reactant is atomic oxygen. So I want to find a reaction that has atomic oxygen. I see that atomic oxygen is in reaction three. However, the atomic oxygen is on the product side. So I'm going to take reaction three and I'm going to reverse that reaction. Now the other thing I want to note is that there are two atomic oxygens on that product side. So not only am I going to reverse this reaction, I'm going to divide it by two. So if I write reaction three reversed and divided by two, it would look like atomic oxygen gets me half an O2. So now I have to start manipulating my delta H. The original delta H for reaction number three was 495. So what I did to this reaction is I divided the reaction by two. So I'm gonna have to do the same to my delta H. The other thing I did is I reversed the order in which I wrote the reaction. So I'm going to have to times this by negative 1. Now the last thing you guys will notice is that I have this extra ozone in my reaction. It doesn't appear on the reactant side, and I don't see it being cancelled right now. So I have to get rid of that ozone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and invoke reaction number 2. Reaction number two contains ozone. However, the ozone that I want to get rid of is on my reactant side. Now for reaction two to help me, I have to put ozone on the product side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write that reaction, but I'm going to reverse that reaction. So this is going to be three halves O2, and it's going to go to ozone. And again, I have to deal with my delta H. Now the original delta H was negative 142.3, and since I reversed it, I have to times this by negative 1. So let's go ahead and cancel things that appear on both sides. So my ozone, I specifically added reaction 2 to make sure I canceled this out. And what you guys will notice is that one oxygen plus half an oxygen equals three halves an oxygen. So these O2s cancel each other out. So now what I can do is I can go ahead and write down anything that wasn't canceled out, which gives me the original equation that I was after. Now if I go ahead and do the math, where I add all these delta H's together with all the manipulations involved, what I get is negative 304.1 kilojoules. General people, I hope that made sense, and remember to stay safe, Chem1B.